God Eater 3 is out now on the Nintendo Switch, but is it just a Monster Hunter clone, or is it a good game in its own right? And what about the quality of the port? How good a job have they done? I'm James Romero, this is Switch Watch. Let's jump in and take a look. The God Eater story is interesting. Set in the not too distant future, the world has been beset by mutated monsters known as Aragami. These foul beasts devour all before them and only certain humans who can take in the cells of an Aragami and mutate to handle this power can stand up to them. They are known as God Eaters and they wield monstrous, oversized weapons in true anime fashion known as God Arcs. That's the backstory. Fast forward to this, part 3, and a mysterious ash cloud has destroyed much of the overground land, making it uninhabitable. Humans have bunkered down into small ports, and an even more powerful type of God Eater, Adaptive God Eaters, or AGE for short, are now humanity's last hope. They can withstand the ash where regular humans cannot, and so are sent out to defeat the Aragami. Perhaps because they are so powerful, or perhaps because civilization has been whittled down to a shell of its former self, AGEs are effectively slaves, let out on short trips to kill Aragamis, quickly return and head out soon after. This story is full of interesting concepts, so much so that there is an anime series developed from the game series, and yet for all this promise in the game it doesn't quite unfold in the best way. Given the nature of the game it's perhaps hard to bring it all together and the tone seems a little off considering the cast are fighting for their freedom. Ultimately, the story here isn't told particularly well, but it fits into a cool overarching tale, and after all, we're here to bash monsters and get loot. Inevitably, it's easy to start by saying this game is similar to Monster Hunter because 80% of its concepts and the way it plays is the same, but that alone doesn't do it justice. It has a lot going on in its own right, and not just the fact that it's an anime style version. Starting out, you are introduced to the game's core mechanics, pick up a massive weapon and a huge gun, head into battle, kill some monsters, gather some loot and head back where you use the items found to make new weapons and tweak your characters before heading back out and doing it all over again. Yes please, I hear you say, and I agree. It's a proven method that works. When you head into battle, you are dumped onto a small map with your team of AGEs, you're self-controlling your protagonist that you created with a nice little character creator up front and up to three additional members from a roster that expands. At first, it will just be you and one other for a little while. Your mission will always be kill the enemy, though sometimes it's one Aragami, other times it's more. You have a time limit, but it never really comes into effect. Battles at the beginning are less than a minute long, and even later on don't really exceed 10 minutes. When you locate the Aragami and engage, it seems simple at first. There are two attacks, one with X and the other with Y. Mashing these will, at first, lead to success. Except, there's a lot more going on. You have a shield which you can use to bash and to guard against enemy attacks. You can jump into the air and then dive down at the bad guys. And you can switch to a gun which uses OP. OP is charged by physical attacks so you can't just stand back and shoot enemies. You can also devour enemies, either with a quick version or a longer one. This literally extends a big old monster mouth and takes a nice nibble out of your enemy and charges up your burst starts. When charged, your defense and attacks are pumped, plus you can equip different skills that come into effect when this mode is on. And you can double jump, you can even modify your burst starts to make them more powerful. Throw into this 8 different types of short range weapons, 4 types of gun and 3 types of shield and you can see there's a lot of choice. Each weapon has unique skills and really do play differently. For example, short blades are quick and good in the air. The new Heavy Moon God Arcs, on the other hand, are big circular blades that can unleash registering combos. Spears have some great attacks for closing down on enemies and dodging and so on and so forth. There's lots to do and play with. I really enjoyed the twin blade that you can stick together into one and then charge up your OP really quickly and spit it out to do some awesome attacks. Enemies equally start out quite simple, but it's not long before you face tougher Ash Aragami that themselves devour you and have their own burst gauge and skills. Battle is really satisfying with bigger Aragami you can focus on parts of their body such as a tail or leg to weaken them before heading in for the kill. They also have their own play patterns, different skills that they themselves use and there's just a lot going on. As I delved deeper I was impressed at how the game is well balanced between jumping and smashing enemies and depending on how far you want to delve, a huge number of systems. 
Personally, I'm a huge fan of detailed systems and no one makes them like creators in Japan. Where this can sometimes lead to tedium, however, here it's up to you whether you want to focus on one type of weapon, craft and improve it, unlock new skills for it and become a master with it, or whether you want to take advantage of switching loadouts to take advantage of enemies' weaknesses and unlock more burst starts which are unique to different weapon types. If I went through all the game systems, we would be here for hours, but needless to say, it's well balanced and very deep if you choose to take the plunge. You can choose which missions to tackle, more on that shortly, but when choosing a mission, you can see what the chance of an item has of dropping, so when you are looking to craft a new item, you know where to farm. An example of how the game wants you to get stuck into the action, letting you grind, but not making it harder than it needs to be. I found myself building lots of new weapons and getting to grips with them before finding a blueprint for something more powerful and farming to be able to make it, then farming items to upgrade it and so on and so forth. It's a satisfying circle and every few hours something new seems to turn up. Powerful engage abilities where you combo with an ally or acceleration triggers that buff you for achieving certain mid-battle targets and it just goes on and on. Unlike in other games where your allies are fairly useless, here they are a force to be reckoned with and the AI is solid. You can swap people in or out and these characters also gain AP similarly to you which you can use to buy and equip certain traits, more strength, healing bullets, resistances and so on. As the tale unfolds you soon find yourself on an ash crawler, effectively big caravans that roam the Ashlands fighting Aragami on behalf of their port. It's in this caravan that you spend time in between battles. This mobile fortress reminds me of the blimp in Final Fantasy VII. Your fellow characters are dotted around different floors and there are terminals to craft and tinker with your loadouts. A nice touch is that you can save a few favourites to speed changing these loadouts up. You can even save bullet types which you can craft as well. Often to progress the story you need to chat to a few different characters. You will know who they are as they will have a speech bubble over their heads. It's a system that makes sense but to be honest is a bit tedious at times, running around to speak to people and then often skipping the dialogue isn't that fun and it does take up quite a bit of the game. When you're ready you select a mission and these come in a few forms. There are standard missions which include side quests and the main story progressing quests. Certificate missions which include normal difficulty and hard difficulty challenges. These level up your rank and are generally the tougher missions in the game and with the 1.4 patch there are trial missions as well. In online multiplayer, you can join anyone and progress through their campaign at any point, which is a great way to do it. Unfortunately, one drawback is you can only play through missions you've gone up to. So, for example, if I'm near the end of the game and you were just starting out, we would need to jump into your story and catch up. Online play is impressive. I didn't really experience issues other than some general lag at times, which could be servers or could even be my own internet connection. Either way, they didn't affect me too much. As well as this, you have the ability to jump into 8-man raids as endgame content. I haven't yet gotten to try these, but they look awesome and I can't wait to get in. The addition of local co-op is brilliant. Being able to jump into play with each other on the move is mouthwatering and of course, a feature that's exclusive for the Switch. There's plenty of ways to play through short missions, either alone or with friends, and apart from the lacking diversity of maps and the fact that they are all quite linear, None of them are very open or expansive. It is great fun. The soundtrack for God Eater 3 is good. The songs fit the game really well and are all of a good standard. Though I wouldn't say they particularly stood out like some of the songs in previous titles did. Sound effects are perfect. Slashes, crunches and grunts hit the spot. Sorry to be such a bother. One really nice touch is the ability to switch voice between Japanese and English language and both are voiced really well. Thinking back to the story and one of the things I don't like is that your character is a bit passive, your lines aren't read out and the tale unfolds mainly through the characters around you based on your choices. It's a bit harder to get into the tale because of this. I love the art style, big oversized weapons, monsters and outlandish skills. It's over the top in a great way. There are a lot of different characters, various monsters including some great looking ones and different costumes, weapons and skills to see. Motion is good and the cutscenes look equally decent. 
One area that is lacking is the variety of maps, there just aren't enough to keep things fresh, which is a shame. When you compare the visuals on the Switch when docked to other platforms, there is less detail, but there's not a lot in it in my opinion. On the move, things get slightly blurry, but given the smaller screen, this is not a major issue for me. What is fantastic is the performance. I experience no slowdown or dips. The game runs at a very solid 30 frames per second, and the action is fast paced and fluid. Marvelous have to be commended for their efforts with this port. It's right up there with the best ones we have seen. At $60 in the US or £50, it is a lot to ask for. On other platforms, you can pick it up now that it's been out for a couple of months at about 33% less. With that said, this is a top quality port and local cop is a fantastic addition that the dev team did well to add. You have the latest content at patch 1.4, which is positive, and the ability to play this game on the move is brilliant. As for the game itself, there is easily 40 plus hours of content here. The story alone is over 20 hours to complete, and if the community is strong, then the additional online raids with up to 8 people could keep you entertained for a while yet. It's a comprehensive game with Japanese and English voice acting, plenty of items, and new content being added fairly often. Plus various multiplayer options, it's a strong total package. But again, $60 is a lot for some. If you can't buy many games at that price point, then it does of course have very stiff competition. God Eater 3 is a great example of a port done well. A slight visual dip in exchange for solid performance and then adding in local co-op and the ability to play this on the move, taking advantage of the Switch hardware is the way to go. As for the game, if you are a fan of action RPGs and can look past a few rough edges, repeated maps and a story that doesn't quite come together given its high potential, then this definitely could be for you. I found its gameplay to be a really good fun and its battles are much shorter than Monster Hunter, making this a great travel companion on the Switch. Overall, a very solid 8 out of 10 from me. A bit on the pricey side, but a great addition nonetheless. And that's it from me today, everybody. I'm James Zimero and this is Switch Watch. I wanted to say a massive thank you to all of our existing subscribers. I really appreciate you guys following us. If you haven't already done so and you want to get more content like this delivered to you, then please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get notifications. You might have seen we've done a gameplay video of this one showing a lot more handheld footage. So if you want to take another look before committing to buying, then please click the link up at the top right hand side. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.